A Dutch Lullaby by Eugene Field From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter as the narrator Anusha Ayer as the moon Jason in Panama as the fisherman And Craig Franklin as the stars A Dutch Lullaby Winkin, blinkin' and nod one night Sailed off in a wooden shoe Sailed on a river of misty light Into a sea of dew Where are you going and what do you wish? The old moon asked the three We have come to fish for the herring fish That live in this beautiful sea Nets of silver and gold have we Said winkin, blinkin and nod the old moon laughed and sung a song as they rocked in the wooden shoe, and the wind that sped them all night long ruffled the waves of dew. The little stars were the herring fish that lived in the beautiful sea. Now cast your nets wherever you wish, but never afeard are we. So cried the stars to the fishermen three, winkin', blinkin', and nod all night long their nets they threw for the fish in the twinkling foam then down from the sky came the wooden shoe bringing the fishermen home twas all so pretty a sail it seemed as if it could not be and some folks thought twas a dream they dreamed of sailing that beautiful sea but i shall name you the fishermen three winkin blinkin and nod winkin and blinkin are two little eyes and nod is a little head and the wooden shoe that sailed the skies is a wee one's trundle bed so shut your eyes while mother sings of the wonderful sights that be and you shall see the beautiful things as you rock in the misty sea where the old shoe rocked the fishermen three winkin Blinkin and nod. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Half Waking by William Ellingham. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Half Waking. I thought it was the little bed i slept in long ago a straight white curtain at the head and two smooth knobs below i thought i saw the nursery fire and in a chair well known my mother sat and did not tire with reading all alone if i should make the slightest sound to show that i'm awake she'd rise and lap the blankets round my pillow softly shake kiss me and turn my face to see the shadows on the wall and then sing rousseau's dream to me till fast asleep i fall but this is not my little bed that time is far away with strangers now i live instead from dreary day to day end of poem this recording is in the public domain Twinkle Twinkle by Anonymous from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Twinkle 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 Twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are when the glorious sun is set when the grass with dew is wet then you show your little light twinkle twinkle all the night twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are 
when the blazing sun is gone when he nothing shines upon then you show your little light twinkle twinkle all the night twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are in the dark blue sky you keep and often through my curtains peep for you never shut your eye till the sun is in the sky twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are as your bright and tiny spark lights the traveller in the dark though i know not what you are twinkle twinkle little star twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are end of poem this recording is in the public domain pretty cow by jane taylor from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin pretty cow thank you pretty cow that made pleasant milk to soak my bread every day and every night warm and fresh and sweet and white do not chew the hemlock rank growing on the weedy bank but the yellow cowslips eat that will make it very sweet where the purple violet grows where the bubbling water flows where the grass is fresh and fine pretty cow go there and dine end of poem this recording is in the public domain the three little kittens by eliza lee fallen from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao as a narrator sonia as the kittens and anusha ayur as the mother cat the three little kittens a cat's tale with additions three little kittens lost their mittens and they began to cry oh mother dear we very much fear that we have lost our mittens lost your mittens you naughty kittens then you shall have no pie meow 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 no you shall have no pie meow 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 the three little kittens found their mittens and they began to cry oh mother dear see here see here see we have found our mittens put on your mittens you silly kittens and you may have some pie purr 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 oh let us have the pie purr 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 the three little kittens put on their mittens and soon ate up the pie oh mother dear we greatly fear that we have soiled our mittens soiled your mittens you naughty kittens then they began to sigh meow 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 then they began to sigh meow 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 the three little kittens washed their mittens and hung them out to dry oh mother dear do not you hear that we have washed our mittens washed your mittens oh your good kittens but i smell a rat close by hush hush meow meow we smell a rat close by meow 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 end of poem this recording is in the public domain the land of counterpane by robert louis stevenson from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama the land of counterpane when I was sick and lay abed, I had two pillows at my head, 
And all my toys beside me lay To keep me happy all the day. And sometimes, for an hour or so, I watched my leaden soldiers go With different uniforms and drills Among the bedclothes through the hills, And sometimes sent my ships and fleets All up and down among the sheets, Or brought my trees and houses out And planted cities all about. I was the giant, great and still, That sits upon the pillow hill, and sees before him dale and plain, the pleasant land of counterpane. Robert Louis Stevenson End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How Doth the Little Busy Bee By Isaac Watts From The World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. How doth the little busy bee? How doth the little busy bee improve each shining hour, and gather honey all the day from every opening flower? How skilfully she builds her cell, how neat she spreads her wax, and labors hard to store it well with the sweet food she makes. In works of labor or of skill, I would be busy too. For Satan finds the mischief still for idle hands to do. In books, or work, or healthful play, let my first years be past, that I may give for every day some good account at last. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Try Again by Anonymous from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by sonia try again tis a lesson you should heed try 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 again if at first you don't succeed try 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 again once or twice though you should fail try again if you would at last prevail try again if we strive tis no disgrace though we may not win the race what should you do in that case try again if you find your task is hard try again time will bring you your reward try again all that other folks can do with your patience should not you only keep this rule in view try again end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Good Night and Good Morning by Richard Monkton Milnes, Lord Houghton, from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org by Jason and Panama as the narrator, Anusha Ayer as Lucy, Craig Franklin as the Rooks, and thomas peter as the sheep good night and good morning a fair little girl sat under a tree sewing as long as her eyes could see then smoothed her work and folded it right and said dear work good night good night such a number of rooks came over her head crying caw caw on their way to bed she said as she watched their curious flight little black things good night good night the horses neighed and the oxen lowed the sheep's bleat bleat came over the road all seeming to say with a quiet delight good, good little girl, girl good, good night, night good, good night. night she did not say to the sun good night though she saw him there like a ball of light for she knew he had God's time to keep all over the world and never could sleep. The tall pink foxglove bowed his head, the violets curtsied and went to bed, and good little Lucy tied up her hair and said on her knees her favorite prayer. And while on her pillow she softly lay, she knew nothing more till again it was day, and all things said to the beautiful sun, Good morning, good morning, good morning. Our, our work has begun. begun. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. The Spider and the Fly by Mary Howitt From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer as the narrator Lian Yao as a spider And Sonia as the fly The Spider and the Fly Will you walk into my parlour? Said the spider to the fly tis the prettiest little parlour that ever you did spy the way into my parlour is up a winding stair and i have many curious things to show when you are there oh no no said the little fly to ask me is in vain for who goes up your winding stair can never come down again i am sure you must be weary dear with soaring up so high will you rest upon my little bed said the spider to the fly there are pretty curtains drawn around the sheets are fine and thin and if you like to rest a while i'll snugly tuck you in oh no no said the little fly for i have often heard it said they never never wake again who sleep upon your bed said the cunning spider to the fly dear friend what can i do to prove the warm affection i've always felt for you i have within my pantry good store of all that's nice i'm sure you're very welcome will you please to take a slice oh no no said the little fly kind sir that cannot be i've heard what's in your pantry and i do not wish to see sweet creature said the spider you're witty and you're wise how handsome are your gauzy wings how brilliant are your eyes i have a little looking-glass upon my parlour shelf if you'll step in one moment dear you shall behold yourself i thank you gentle sir she said for what you're pleased to say and bidding you good morning now i'll call another day the spider turned him round about and went into his den for well he knew the silly fly would soon come back again. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly, and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. Then came out to his door again, and merrily did sing, Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with pearl and silver wing. Your robes are green and purple, there's a crest upon your head. Your eyes are like the diamond bright, but mine are dull as lead alas alas how very soon the silly little fly hearing his wily flattering words came slowly flitting by with buzzing wings she hung aloft then near and nearer drew thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue thinking only of her crested head poor foolish thing at last up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast he dragged her up his winding stair into the dismal den within his little parlour but she ne'er came out again and now dear little children who may the story read to idle silly nattering words i pray you ne'er give heed unto an evil counsellor close heart and ear and eye and take a lesson from this tale of the spider and the fly end of poem this recording is in the public domain thread and song by john williamson palmer from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Thread and Song Sweeter and sweeter, soft and low, Need little nymph thy numbers flow, Urging thy thimble, thrift's tidy symbol, Busy and nimble to and fro, Prettily plying thread and song, keeping them flying late and long through the stitch linger kissing thy finger quick 
as it skips along many an echo soft and low follows thy flying fancy so melodies thrilling tenderly filling thee with their trilling come and go memory's finger quick as thine loving to linger on the line writes of another dearer than brother would that the name were mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain Let Dogs Delight to Bark and Bite by Isaac Watts From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Let Dogs Delight to Bark and Bite Let dogs delight to bark and bite, for God hath made them so, let bears and lions growl and fight, for tis their nature too. But children, you should never let your angry passions rise. Your little hands were never made to tear each other's eyes. Let love through all your actions run, and all your words be mild. Live like the blessed virgin's son, that sweet and lovely child. His soul was gentle as a lamb, and as his stature grew, he grew in favour both with man and God his father too. Now, Lord of all, he reigns above, and from his heavenly throne he sees what children dwell in love, and marks them for his own. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Children's Church by Carl von Gerach Translation by James Freeman Clark From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama The Children's Church The bells of the churches are ringing. Papa and Mama have both gone, and three little children sit singing together this still Sunday morn. While the bells toll away in the steeple, though too small to sit still in a pew, these busy religious small people determine to have their church too. So, as free as the birds or the breezes by which their fair ringlets are fanned, each rogue sings away as he pleases, with book upside down in his hand. Their hymn has no sense in its letter, their music no rhythm nor tune. Our worship, perhaps, may be better, but theirs reaches God quite as soon. Their angels stand close to the Father, his heaven is bright with these flowers, and the dear God above us would rather hear praise from their lips than from ours. Sing on, little children, your voices fill the air with contentment and love. All nature around you rejoices, and the birds warble sweetly above. Sing on for the proudest orations, the liturgies sacred and long. The anthems and worship of nations are poor to your innocent song. Sing on, our devotion is colder, though wisely our prayers may be planned. For often we too who are older hold our book the wrong way in our hand. Sing on, our harmonic inventions we study with labor and pain. Yet often our angry contentions take the harmony out of our strain. Sing on, all our struggle and battle, our cry when most deep and sincere. What are they? A child's simple prattle, and breath in the infinite ear. From the German of Karl Gerach, translation of James Freeman Clark. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Child's Evening Hymn by Sabine Baring Gould From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Child's Evening Hymn 
Now the day is over, night is drawing nigh, shadows of the evening steal across the sky. Now the darkness gathers, stars begin to peep, birds and beasts and flowers soon will be asleep. Jesus, give the weary Come and sweet repose with thy tenderest blessing. May our eyelids close. Grant to little children visions bright of thee. God the sailors tossing on the deep blue sea. Comfort every sufferer watching late in pain. Those who plant some evil from their sin restrain through the long night watches may thine angels spread their white wings above me watching round my bed when the morning wakens, then may I arise, pure and fresh and sinless in thy holy eyes. Glory to the Father, Glory to the Son, and to the blessed Spirit, whilst all ages run. Amen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. It is finished by Christina Georgina Rossetti from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. It is finished. Dear Lord, let me recount to thee some of the great things thou hast done for me, even me, thy little one. It was not I that cared for thee, but thou didst set thy heart upon me, even me, thy little one. And therefore was it sweet to thee to leave thy majesty and throne and grow like me, a little one, a swaddling baby on the knee of a dear mother of thine own, quite weak like me, thy little one. Thou didst assume my misery, and reap the harvest I had sown, comforting me, thy little one. Jerusalem and Galilee, thy love embraced not these alone, but also me, thy little one. Thy unblemished body on the tree was bared and broken to atone, for me, for me, thy little one. Thou lovest me upon the tree, still me hid by the ponderous stone, me always me, 
thy little one. And love of me arose with thee, when death and hell lay overthrown. Thou lovedst me, thy little one. And love of me went up with thee, to sit upon thy father's throne. Thou lovedst me, thy little one. Lord, as thou me, so would I thee, love in pure love's communion, for thou lovest me, thy little one. Which love of me brings back with thee, to judgment when the trump is blown, still loving me, thy little one. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Little Child's Hymn for Night and Morning by Francis Turner Palgrave From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama A Little Child's Hymn for Night and Morning Thou that once on mother's knee wast a little one like me, When I wake or go to bed lay thy hands about my head, let me feel thee very near, Jesus Christ, our Saviour dear. Be beside me in the light, close by me through all the night. Make me gentle, kind, and true. Do what mother bids me do. Help and cheer me when I fret, and forgive me when I forget. Once wast thou in cradle laid, baby bright in manger shade, with the oxen and the cows, and the lambs outside the house. Now thou art above the sky, canst thou hear a baby cry? Thou art nearer when we pray, since thou art so far away. Thou my little hymn wilt hear, Jesus Christ our Saviour dear. Thou that once on mother's knee, wast a little one like me. Francis Turner Palgrave End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sheep and Lambs by Catherine Tynan Hinkson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Sheep and Lambs All in the April evening, April airs were abroad. The sheep with their little lambs passed me by on the road. The sheep with their little lambs passed me by on the road. All in the April evening, I thought on the Lamb of God. The lambs were weary and crying with a weak human cry. I thought on the Lamb of God going meekly to die. Up in the blue, blue mountains, dewy pastures are sweet. Rest for the little bodies, rest for the little feet. But for the Lamb of God up on the hilltop green, only a cross of shame, too stark crosses between all in the april evening april airs were abroad i saw the sheep with their lambs and thought on the lamb of god catherine tynan hinkson end of poem this recording is in the public domain by cool siloms shady rill by reginald heber from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org, by Thomas Peter. By Cool Siloam's Shady Rill By Cool Siloam's Shady Rill How sweet the lily grows how sweet the breath beneath the hill of Sharon's dewy rose. Lo, such the child whose early feet the paths of peace have trod. Whose secret heart with influence sweet Is upward drawn to God. 
by cool silence shady rim the lily must decay the rose that blooms beneath the hill must shortly fade away and soon too soon the wintry hour a man's maturer age will shake the soul with sorrow's power and stormy passion's rage o thou whose infant feet were found within thy father's shrine whose years with changeless virtue crowned were all alike divine dependent on thy bounteous breath we seek thy grace alone in childhood manhood age and death to keep us still thine own end of poem this recording is in the public domain the romance of the swan's nest by elizabeth barrett browning from the world's best poetry volume 1 home and friendship part 1 read for librivox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator, Anusha Ayer as Little Ellie, Thomas Peter as the lover, and Jason in Panama as the footpage. The Romance of the Swan's Nest Little Ellie sits alone mid the beeches of a meadow, by a stream side on the grass, and the trees are showering down doubles of their leaves in shadow on her shining hair and face she has thrown her bonnet by and her feet she has been dipping in the shallow water's flow now she holds them nakedly in her hands all sleek and dripping while she rocketh to and fro little ellie sits alone and the smile she softly uses fills the silence like a speech while she thinks what shall be done and the sweetest pleasure chooses for her future within reach Little Ellie, in her smile, chooses, I will have a lover, riding on a steed of steeds. He shall love me without guile, and to him I will discover the swan's nest among the reeds. And the steed shall be red roan, and the lover shall be noble. With an eye that takes the breath, and the lute he plays upon, shall strike ladies into trouble as his sword strikes men to death and the steed it shall be shod all in silver housed in azure and the mane shall swim the wind and the hoofs along the sod shall flash onward and keep measure till the shepherds look behind but my lover will not prize all the glory that he rides in when he gazes in my face he will say o oh, love thine eyes build the shrine my soul abides in and i kneel here for thy grace then i then he shall kneel low with the red roan steed anear him which shall seem to understand till i answer rise and go for the world must love and fear him whom i gift with heart and hand then he will arise so pale I shall feel my own lips tremble with a yes I must not say. Natless maiden brave, farewell, I will utter, and dissemble, light tomorrow with today. Then he'll ride among the hills to the wide world past the river, there to put away all wrong, to make straight distorted wills, and to empty the broad quiver which the wicked bear along. Three times shall a young foot page swim the stream and climb the mountain and kneel down beside my feet. Lo, my master sends this gauge, lady, for thy pity's counting. 
what wilt thou exchange for it and the first time i will send a white rosebud for a guerdon and the second time a glove but the third time i may bend from my pride and answer pardon if he comes to take my love then the young footpage will run then my lover will ride faster till he kneeleth at my knee i am a duke's eldest son thousand serfs do call me master but o oh, love i love but thee he will kiss me on the mouth then and lead me as a lover through the crowds that praise his deeds and when soul tied by one troth unto him i will discover that swan's nest among the reeds little ellie with her smile not yet ended rose up gaily tied the bonnet donned the shoe and went homeward round a mile just to see as she did daily what more eggs were with the two pushing through the elm tree copse winding up the stream light-hearted where the osier pathway leads past the boughs she stoops and stops lo the wild swan had deserted and a rat had gnawed the reeds ellie went home sad and slow if she found the lover ever with his red roan steed of steeds sooth i know not but i know she could never show him never that swan's nest among the reeds end of poem this recording is in the public domain a good play by robert louis stevenson from the world's best poetry Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. A Good Play. We built a ship upon the stairs, all made of the back bedroom chairs, and filled it full of sofa pillows to go a sailing on the billows. We took a saw and several nails, and water in the nursery pails, and Tom said, Let us also take an apple and a slice of cake, which was enough for Tom and me to go a-sailing on till tea. We sailed along for days and days, and had the very best of plays. But Tom fell out and hurt his knee, so there was no one left but me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Life Lesson by James Whitcomb Riley From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao A Life Lesson There, little girl! don't cry they have broken your doll i know and your tea-set blue and your playhouse too are things of the long ago but childish troubles will soon pass by there little girl don't cry there little girl don't cry they have broken your slate i know and the glad wild ways of your schoolgirl days are things of the long ago but life and love will soon come by there little girl don't cry there little girl don't cry they have broken your heart i know and the rainbow gleams of your youthful dreams are things of long ago but heaven holds all for which you sigh there little girl don't cry end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dead doll by margaret vandergrift from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer the dead doll you needn't be trying to comfort me i tell you my dolly is dead there's no use in saying she isn't with a crack like that in her head it's just like you said it wouldn't hurt much to have my tooth out that day and then when the man most pulled my head off you hadn't a word to say 
and i guess you must think i'm a baby when you say you can mend it with glue as if i didn't know better than that why just suppose it was you you might make her look all mended but what do i care for looks why glues for chairs and tables and toys and the backs of books my dolly my own little daughter oh but it's the awfulest crack it just makes me sick to think of the sound when her poor head went whack against that horrible brass thing that holds up the little shelf now nursie what makes you remind me i know that i did it myself i think you must be crazy you'll get her another head what good would forty heads do her i tell you my dolly is dead and to think i hadn't quite finished her elegant new spring hat and i took a sweet ribbon of hers last night to tie on that horrid cat when my mamma gave me that ribbon i was playing out in the yard she said to me most expressly here's a ribbon for hildegard and i went and put it on tabby and hildegard saw me do it but i said to myself oh never mind i don't believe she knew it but i know that she knew it now and i just believe i do that her poor little heart was broken and so her head broke too oh my baby my little baby i wish my head had been hit for i've hit it over and over and it hasn't cracked a bit but since the darling is dead she'll want to be buried of course we will take my little wagon nurse and you shall be the horse and i'll walk behind and cry and we'll put her in this you see this dear little box and we'll bury her there out under the maple tree and papa will make a tombstone like the one he made for my bird and he'll put what i tell him on it yes every single word i shall say here lies hildegard a beautiful doll who is dead she died of a broken heart and a dreadful crack in her head end of poem this recording is in the public domain foreign children by robert louis stevenson from the world's best poetry volume 1 home and friendship part 1 read for librivox.org by sonia foreign children little indian sioux or crow little frosty eskimo little turk or japanee oh don't you wish that you were me you have seen the scarlet trees and the lions overseas you have eaten ostrich eggs and turned the turtles off their legs such a life is very fine but it's not so nice as mine you must often as you trod have wearied not to be abroad you have curious things to eat i am fed on proper meat you must dwell beyond the foam but i am safe and live at home little indian sioux or crow little frosty eskimo little turk or japanee oh don't you wish that you were me end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Unseen Playmate by Robert Louis Stevenson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Unseen Playmate When children are playing alone on the green, In comes the playmate that never was seen. When children are happy and lonely and good, the friend of the children comes out of the wood nobody heard him and nobody saw his is a picture you never could draw but he's sure to be present abroad or at home when children are happy and playing alone he lies in the laurels he runs on the grass he sings when you tinkle the musical glass whene'er you are happy and cannot tell why the friend of the children is sure to be by he loves to be little he hates to be big tis he that inhabits the caves that you dig tis he 
when you play with your soldiers of tin that sides with the frenchman and never can win tis he when at night you go off to your bed bid you go to your sleep and not trouble your head for wherever they're lying in cupboard or shelf tis he will take care of your playthings himself end of poem this recording is in the public domain the shadows by frank dempster sherman from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox org by sonia the shadows all up and down in shadow town the shadow children go in every street you're sure to meet them running to and fro they move around without a sound they play at hide and seek but no one yet that i have met has ever heard them speak beneath the tree you often see them dancing in and out and in the sun there's always one to follow you about go where you will he follows still or sometimes runs before and home at last you'll find him fast beside you at the door a faithful friend is he to lend his presence everywhere blow out the light to bed at night your shadow mate is there then he will call the shadows all into your room to leap and such a peck they make it black and fill your eyes with sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Dancers by Michael Field From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer The Dancers I dance and dance, another fawn, a black one, dances on the lawn. He moves with me. And when I lift my heels, his feet directly shift. I can't outdance him, though I try. He dances nimbler than I. I toss my head, and so does he. What tricks he dares to play on me? I touch the ivy in my hair. Ivy he has, and finger there. The spiteful thing to mock me so. I will outdance him. Ho, ho, ho! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Shadow by Robert Louis Stevenson From the World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao My Shadow I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me and what can be the use of him is more than i can see he is very very like me from the heels up to the head and i see him jump before me when i jump into my bed the funniest thing about him is the way he likes to grow not at all like proper children which is always very slow for he sometimes shoots up taller like an india rubber ball and he sometimes gets so little that there's none of him at all he hasn't got a notion of how children ought to play, and can only make a fool of me in every sort of way. He stays so close beside me, he's a coward, you can see. I think shame to stick to Nursey, and that shadow sticks to me. One morning, very early, before the sun was up, I rose and found a shining dew on every buttercup. But my lazy little shadow, like an arrant sleepy head, had stayed at home behind me, and was fast asleep in bed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Little Bell by Thomas Westwood From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator Thomas Peter as the blackbird Sonia as Little Bell, and Lian Yao as the Angel. Little Bell 
piped the blackbird on the beechwood spray pretty maid slow pondering this way what's your name quoth he what's your name oh stop and straight unfold pretty maid with showery curls of gold little bell said she little bell sat down beneath the rocks tossed aside her gleaming golden locks bonny bird quoth she sing me your best song before i go here's the very finest song i know little bell said he and the blackbird piped you never heard half so gay a song from any bird full of quips and wiles now so round and rich now soft and slow all for the love of that sweet face below dimpled or with smiles and the while that bonny bird did pour his full heart out freely o'er and o'er neath the morning skies in the little childish heart below all the sweetness seemed to grow and grow and shine forth in happy overflow from the brown bright eyes down the dell she tripped and through the glade peeped the squirrel from the hazel shade and from out the tree swung and leapt and frolicked void of fear while bold blackbird piped that all might hear little bell piped he little bell sat down amid the fern squirrel squirrel to your task return bring me nuts quoth she up away the frisky squirrel hies golden woodlights glancing in his eyes and down the tree great ripe nuts kissed brown by july's sun in the little lap drop one by one hark how blackbird pipes to see the fun happy bell pipes he little bell looked up and down the glade squirrel squirrel from the nut tree shade bonny blackbird if you're not afraid come and share with me down came squirrel eager for his fare down came bonny blackbird i declare little bell gave each his honest share ah the merry three and the while those frolic playmates twain piped and frisked from bough to bough again neath the morning skies in the little childish heart below all the sweetness seemed to grow and grow and shine out in a happy overflow from her brown bright eyes by her snow-white cot at close of day knelt sweet bell with folded palms to pray very calm and clear rose the praying voice to where unseen in blue heaven an angel shape serene paused a while to hear what good child is this the angel said that with happy heart beside her bed pray so lovingly low and soft oh very low and soft crooned the blackbird in the orchard croft bell dear bell crooned he whom god's creatures love the angel fair murmured god doth bless with angels care child thy bed shall be folded safe from harm love deep and kind shall watch around and leave good gifts behind little bell for thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain Wings by Mary Louise Ritter from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Wings. The sunset light is on the sail, the water all aglow, and on the billows up and down, the boat rocks to and fro. The birds float upward to the sky. Oh, how I long for wings to fly! The boat has wings, the birds have wings, But none remain for me, Save wings of kind and loving thought, And wings of memory. On these I come, and still repeat, I love, I love, I love you, sweet! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Foreign Lands by Robert Louis Stevenson From The World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao 
foreign lands up into the cherry tree who should climb but little me i held the trunk with both my hands and looked abroad on foreign lands i saw the next door garden lie adorned with flowers before my eye and many pleasant faces more that i had never seen before i saw the dimpling river pass and be the sky's blue looking-glass the dusty roads go up and down with people tramping into town if i could find a higher tree farther and farther i should see to where the grown-up river slips into the sea among the ships to where the roads on either hand lead onward into fairyland where all the children dine at five and all the playthings come alive end of poem this recording is in the public domain under my window by thomas westwood from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by leanne yao under my window under my window under my window all in the midsummer weather three little girls with fluttering curls flit to and fro together there's belle with her bonnet of satin sheen and maud with her mantle of silver green and kate with her scarlet feather under my window under my window leaning stealthily over merry and clear the voice i hear of each glad-hearted rover ah oh, sly little kate she steals my roses and maud and bell twine wreaths and posies as merry as bees in clover under my window under my window in the blue midsummer weather stealing slow on a hushed tiptoe i catch them all together bell with her bonnet of satin sheen and maud with her mantle of silver green and kate with a scarlet feather under my window under my window and off through the orchard closes while maud she flouts and bell she pouts they scamper and drop their posies but dear little kate takes naught to miss and leaps in my arms with a loving kiss and i give her all my roses end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Land of Storybooks by Robert Louis Stevenson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer The Land of Storybooks At evening when the lamp is lit, Around the fire my parents sit. They sit at home and talk and sing, And do not play at anything now with my little gun i crawl all in the dark along the wall and follow round the forest track away behind the sofa back there in the night where none can spy all in my hunter's camp i lie and play at books that i have read till it is time to go to bed these are the hills these are the woods these are my starry solitudes and there the river by whose brink the roaring lions come to drink i see the others far away as if in firelit camp they lay and i like to an indian scout around the party prowled about so when my nurse comes in for me home i return across the sea and go to bed with backward looks at my dear land of story books. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fairy Days by William Makepeace Thackeray From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao as a narrator. And Jason in Panama as the prince. Fairy Days Beside the old hall fire, upon my nurse's knee, Of happy fairy days, what tales were told to me? 
I thought the world was once all peopled with princesses, and my heart would beat to hear their loves and their distresses, and many a quiet night in slumber sweet and deep, the pretty fairy people would visit me in sleep. I saw them in my dreams come flying east and west, with wondrous fairy gifts the newborn babe they blessed. One has brought a jewel, and one a crown of gold, and one has brought a curse, but she is wrinkled and old. The gentle queen turns pale to hear those words of sin, but the king he only laughs and bids the dance begin. The babe has grown to be the fairest of the land, and rides the forest green, a hawk upon her hand, an ambling palfrey white, a golden robe and crown. I've seen her in my dreams, riding up and down, and heard the yoga laugh as she fell into a snare at the little tender creature who wept and tore her hair. But ever when it seemed her need was at the sorest, a prince in shining mail comes prancing through the forest, a waving ostrich plume, a buckler burnished bright. I've seen him in my dreams, good sooth, a gallant knight. His lips are coral red beneath a dark moustache. See how he waves his hand and how his blue eyes flash. Come forth, thou pain him knight. He shouts in accents clear. The giant and the maid both tremble his voice to hear. St. Mary guard him well, he draws his falchion keen. The giant and the knight are lighting on the green. I see them in my dreams, his blade gives stroke on stroke. The giant pants and reels and tumbles like an oak. With what a blushing grace, he falls upon his knee and takes the lady's hand and whispers, You are free. Ah, oh, happy childish tales of night and fairy. I waken from my dreams, but there's never a night for me. I waken from my dreams, and wish that I could be a child by the old hall fire upon my nurse's knee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wind in a Frolic by William Howitt from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao as a narrator. And Anusha Ayer as the wind. The Wind in a Frolic The wind one morning sprang up from sleep, saying, Now for a frolic, now for a leap, now for a madcap galloping chase, I'll make a commotion in every place. So it swept with a bustle right through a great town, creaking the signs and scattering down shutters and whisking with merciless squalls old women's bonnets and gingerbread stalls. There never was heard a much lustier shout as the apples and oranges tumbled about, and the urchins that stand with their thievish eyes forever on watch ran off each with a prize. Then away to the field it went blustering and humming, and the cattle all wondered whatever was coming. It plucked by the tails the grave matronly cows, and tossed the colts' manes all over their brows, till, offended at such a familiar salute, they all turned their backs and stood sulkily mute. So on it went, capering and playing its pranks, whistling with reeds on the broad river's banks, puffing the birds as they sat on the spray, or the traveller grave on the king's highway. It was not too nice to hustle the bags of the beggar and flutter his dirty rags. Twas so bold that it feared not to play its joke with a doctor's wig or the gentleman's cloak. Through the forest it roared and cried gaily, Now, you sturdy old oaks, I'll make you bow. And it made them bow without more ado, or cracked their great branches through and through. Then it rushed, like a monster, on cottage and farm, striking their dwellers with sudden alarm, so they ran out like bees which threatened with harm. There were dames with their kerchiefs tied over their caps, to see if their poultry were free from mishaps. The turkeys they gobbled, the geese screamed aloud, and the hens crept to roost in a terrified crowd. There was a rearing of ladders and logs laying on, where the thatch from the roof threatened soon to be gone. But the wind had swept on, and met in a lane with a schoolboy who panted and struggled in vain for it tossed him and twirled him then passed and he stood with his hat in the pool and a shoe in the mud then away went the wind in its holiday glee and now it was far on the billowy sea and the lordly ships felt its staggering blow and little boats darted to and fro 
but lo night came and it sank to rest on the sea-bird's rock in the gleaming west laughing to think in its fearful fun how little of mischief it had done end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wind by robert louis stevenson from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by sonia the wind i saw you toss the kites on high and blow the birds about the sky and all around i heard you pass like ladies skirts across the grass o oh, wind a blowing all day long o oh, wind that sings so loud a song i saw the different things you did but always you yourself you hid i felt you push i heard you call i could not see yourself at all o oh, wind a blowing all day long o oh, wind that sings so loud a song o oh, you that are so strong and cold o oh, blower are you young or old are you a beast of field and tree or just a stronger child than me o oh, wind a blowing all day long o oh, wind that sings so loud a song end of poem this recording is in the public domain the man in the moon by james whitcomb riley from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by thomas peter the man in the moon said the raggedy man on a hot afternoon my sakes what a lot of mistakes some little folks makes on the man in the moon but people that's been up to see him like me and calls on him frequent and intimately might drop a few hints that would interest you clean through if you wanted him to some actual facts that might interest you oh the man in the moon has a crick in his back wee whim ain't you sorry for him and a mole on his nose that is purple and black and his eyes are so weak that they water and run if he dares to dream even he looks at the sun so he just dreams of stars as the doctors advise my eyes but isn't he wise to just dream of stars as the doctors advise and the man in the moon has a boil on his ear we wing what a singular thing i know but these facts are authentic my dear there's a boil on his ear and a cord on his chin he calls it a dimple but dimples stick in Yet it might be a dimple turned over, you know. Wang ho! Why, certainly so. It might be a dimple turned over, you know. And the man in the moon has a rheumatic knee. Gee whiz! What a pity that is! And his toes have worked round where his heels ought to be. So whenever he wants to go north, he goes south, and comes back with the porridge crumbs all round his mouth, and he brushes them off with a Japanese fan wang wan what a marvelous man what a very remarkably marvelous man and the man in the moon sighed the raggedy man gets so sullensome you know up there by himself since creation began that when i call on him and then come away he grabs me and holds me and begs me to stay till well if it wasn't for jimmy come jim dad limb i'd go partners with him just jump my bob here and be partners with him end of poem this recording is in the public domain the fairies of the calden low by mary howitt from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the mother Lian Yao as Mary, Thomas Peter as the Water Fairies, Anusha Ayer as the Wind Fairies, Jason and Panama as the Crop Fairies, and Craig Franklin as the Brownie. The Fairies of the Calden Low 
a midsummer legend and where have you been my mary and where have you been from me i've been to the top of the cowden low the midsummer night to see and what did you see my mary all up on the cowden low i saw the glad sunshine come down and i saw the merry winds blow and what did you hear my mary all up on the cowden hill i heard the drops of the water made and the airs of the green corn till oh tell me all my mary all all that ever you know for you must have seen the fairies last night on the calden low then take me on your knee mother and listen mother of mine a hundred fairies danced last night and the harpers they were nine and the harp strings rung so merrily to the dancing feet so small but oh the words of their talking were merrier far than all and what were the words my mary that then you heard them say i'll tell you all my mother but let me have my way some of them played with the water and rolled it down the hill and this they said shall speedily turn the poor old miller's mill for there has been no water ever since the first of may and a busy man will the miller be at dawning of the day oh the miller how he will laugh when he sees the mill dam rise the jolly old miller how he will laugh till the tears fill both his eyes and some they seize the little winds that sounded over the hill and each put a horn unto his mouth and blew both loud and shrill and there they said the merry winds go away from every horn and they shall clear the mildew dank from the blind old widow's corn oh the poor blind widow though she has been blind so long she'll be blithe enough when the mildew's gone and the corn stands tall and strong and some they brought the brown linseed and flung it down from the low and this they said by the sunrise in the weaver's croft shall grow oh the poor lame weaver how will he laugh outright when he sees his dwindling flax field all full of flowers by night and then out spoke a brownie with a long beard on his chin i have spun up all the tow he said and i want some more to spin i've spun a piece of hemp and cloth and i want to spin another a little sheet for mary's bed and an apron for her mother with that i could not help but laugh and i laughed out loud and free and then on the top of the cowden low there was no one left but me and on the top of the cowden low the mists were cold and grey and nothing i saw but the mossy stones that round about me lay but coming down from the hilltop i heard afar below how busy the jolly miller was and how the wheel did go and i peeped into the widow's field and sure enough were seen the yellow ears of the mildewed corn all standing stout and green and down by the weaver's croft i stole to see if the flax were sprung and i met the weaver at his gate with the good news on his tongue now this is all i heard mother and all that i did see so prithee make my bed mother for I'm tired as I can be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Elf and the Dormouse by Oliver Herford From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer as the narrator And Lian Yao as the dormouse the elf and the dormouse under a toadstool crept a wee elf out of the rain to shelter himself under the toadstool sound asleep sat a big dormouse all in a heap trembled the wee elf frightened and yet fearing to fly away lest he get wet to the next shelter maybe a mile suddenly the wee elf smiled a wee smile 
tugged till the toadstool toppled in two holding it over him gaily he flew soon he was safe home dry as could be soon woke the dormouse good gracious me where is my toadstool loud he lamented and that's how umbrellas first were invented end of poem this recording is in the public domain a little dutch garden by harriet whitney durbin from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama a little dutch garden i passed by a garden a little dutch garden where useful and pretty things grew heart's ease and tomatoes and pinks and potatoes and lilies and onions and rue i saw in that garden that little dutch garden a chubby dutch man with a spade and a rosy dutch frau with a shoe like a scow and a flaxen hair's little dutch maid there grew in that garden that little dutch garden blue flag flowers lovely and tall and early blush roses and little pink posies but gretchen was fairer than all my heart's in that garden that little dutch garden it tumbled right in as i passed mid wildering mazes of spinach and daisies and gretchen is holding it fast harriet whitney durbin end of poem this recording is in the public domain the first rose of summer by oliver harford from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by lian yao as the narrator and sonia as the rosebud the first rose of summer oh dear is summer over i heard a rosebud moan when first her eyes she opened and found she was alone oh why did summer leave me little me belated where are the other roses i think they might have waited soon the little rosebud saw to her surprise other rosebuds opening so she dried her eyes then i heard her laughing gaily in the sun i thought summer was over why it's just begun end of poem this recording is in the public domain a belated violet by oliver herford from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox .org by anusha ayer as the narrator lian yao as the violet sonia as the trees jason in panama as the grasses and craig franklin as the wind a belated violet very dark the autumn sky dark the clouds that hurried by very rough the autumn breeze shouting rudely to the trees listening frightened pale and cold through the withered leaves and mould peered a violet all in red where oh where is spring she said sighed the trees poor little thing she may call in vain for spring and the grasses whispered low we must never let her know what's this whispering roared the breeze hush a violet sobbed the trees thinks it's spring poor child we fear she will die if she should hear softly stole the wind away tenderly he murmured stay to a late thrush on the wing stay with her one day and sing sang the thrush so sweet and clear that the sun came out to hear and in answer to her song beamed on violet all day long and the last leaves here and there fluttered with a spring-like air then the violet raised her head spring has come at last she said 
happy dreams had violet all that night but happier yet when the dawn came dark with snow violet never woke to know end of poem this recording is in the public domain the frost by hannah flag gold from the world's best poetry volume 1 home and friendship part 1 read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer as the narrator and jason in panama as the frost the frost the frost looked forth one still clear night and he said now i shall be out of sight so through the valley and over the height in silence i'll take my way i will not go like that blustering train the wind and the snow the hail and the rain who make so much bustle and noise in vain but i'll be as busy as they then he went to the mountain and powdered its crest he climbed up the trees and their boughs he dressed with diamonds and pearls and over the breast of the quivering lake he spread a coat of mail that it need not fear the downward point of many a spear that he hung on its margin far and near where a rock could rear its head he went to the windows of those who slept and over each pane like a fairy crept wherever he breathed wherever he stepped by the light of the moon were seen most beautiful things there were flowers and trees there were bevies of birds and swarms of bees there were cities thrones temples and towers and these all pictured in silver sheen but he did one thing that was hardly fair he peeped in the cupboard and finding there that all had forgotten for him to prepare now just to set them a-thinking i'll bite this basket of fruit said he this costly pitcher i'll burst in three and the glass of water they've left for me shall stick to tell them i'm drinking end of poem this recording is in the public domain a visit from saint nicholas by clement clark moore from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by thomas peter as the narrator and craig franklin as saint nicholas a visit from saint nicholas twas the night before christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring not even a mouse the stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads, and Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap, when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter away to the window i flew like a flash tore open the shutters and threw up the sash the moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave a lustre of midday to objects below when what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick i knew in a moment it must be saint nick more rapid than eagles his coursers they came and he whistled and shouted and called them by name now dasher now dancer now prancer and vixen on comet on cupid on donder and blitzen to the top of the porch to the top of the wall now dash away dash away dash away all as dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky so up to the housetop the coursers they flew with the sleigh full of toys and saint nicholas too and then in a twinkling i heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof as i drew in my head and was turning around 
down the chimney saint nicholas came with a bound he was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot a bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack his eyes how they twinkled his dimples how merry his cheeks were like roses his nose like a cherry his droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow the stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath he had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly he was chubby and plump a right jolly old elf and i laughed when i saw him in spite of myself a wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know i had nothing to dread he spoke not a word but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose he sprang to his sleigh to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle but i heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight happy christmas to all and to all a good night end of poem this recording is in the public domain little orphan annie by james whitcomb riley from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox .org by craig franklin little orphaned annie little orphan annie's come to our house to stay and wash the cups and saucers up and brush the crumbs away and shoo the chickens off the porch and dust the hearth and sweep and make the fire and bake the bread and earn her board and keep and all us other children when the supper things is done we set around the kitchen fire and has the mostest fun and listening to the witch's tales that annie tells about and the goblins at gits you if you don't watch out Once there was a little boy wouldn't say his prayers so when he went to bed at night away upstairs his mammy heard him holler and his daddy he'd him bawl and when they turned the kivers down he wasn't there at all and they seeked him in the rafter room and cubby hole and press and seeked him up the chimney flue and ever wears i guess but all they ever found was this his pants and roundabout and the goblins will get you if you don't watch out and one time a little girl had all us laugh and grin and make fun of every one and all her blood and kin and onst when they was company and old folks was there she mocked em and shocked em and said she didn't care and this as she kicked her heels and turned to run and hide they was two great big black things a standing by her side and they snatched her through the ceiling for she knew what she was about and the goblins'll get you if you don't watch out and little orphan annie says when the blaze is blue and the lamp wick sputters and the wind goes woo woo and you hear the crickets quit and the moon is grey and the lightning bugs in dew is all squenched away you better mind your parents and your teachers fond and dear and cherish them at loves you and dry the orphan's tear and hit the poor and needy ones at clusters all about Ere the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old School Punishment by Anonymous From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator and craig franklin as old master brown old school punishment old master brown brought his ferule down and his face looked angry and red go seat you there now anthony blair along with the girls he said then anthony blair with a mortified air with his head down on his breast 
took his penitent seat by the maiden sweet that he loved of all the best and anthony blair seemed whimpering there but the rogue only made believe for he peeped at the girls with the beautiful curls and ogled them over his sleeve end of poem this recording is in the public domain in school days by john greenleaf whittier from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by jason in panama as the narrator and lian yao as the girl in school days still sits the schoolhouse by the road a ragged beggar sunning around it still the sumacs grow and blackberry vines are running within the master's desk is seen deep scarred by raps official the warping floor the battered seats the jackknife's carved initial the charcoal frescoes on its wall its doors worn sill betraying the feet that creeping slow to school went storming out to playing long years ago a winter sun shone over it at setting lit up its western window panes and low eaves icy fretting it touched the tangled golden curls and brown eyes full of grieving of one who still her steps delayed when all the school were leaving for near her stood the little boy her childish favor singled his cap pulled low upon a face where pride and shame were mingled pushing with restless feet the snow to right and left he lingered as restlessly her tiny hands the blue checked apron fingered he saw her lift her eyes he felt the soft hands light caressing and heard the tremble of her voice as if a fault confessing i'm sorry that i spelt the word i hate to go above you because the brown eyes lower fell because you see i love you still memory to a gray-haired man that sweet child face is showing dear girl the grasses on her grave have forty years been growing he lives to learn in life's hard school how few who pass above him lament their triumph and his loss like her because they love him end of poem this recording is in the public domain seeing things by eugene field from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by thomas peter seeing things i ain't afeard of snakes or toads or bugs or worms or mice and things that goes are scared of i think are awful nice i'm pretty brave i guess and yet i hate to go to bed for when i'm tucked up warm and snug and when my prayers are said mother tells me happy dreams and takes away the light and leaves me lying all alone and seeing things at night sometimes they're in the corner sometimes they're by the door sometimes they're all a-standin in the middle of the floor sometimes they are sittin down sometimes they're walkin round so softly and so creepy like they never make a sound sometimes they are as black as ink and other times they're white but the color ain't no difference when you see things at night once when i licked a feller had had just moved on our street and father sent me up to bed without a bit to eat i woke up in the dark and saw things standing in a row ah looking at me cross-eyed and pitting at me so oh my i was so scared that time i never slept a mite it's almost honest when i'm bad i see things at night lucky thing i ain't a girl or i'd be scared to death being i'm a boy i duck my head and hold my breath and I'm, oh, so sorry, I'm a naughty boy. And then I promise to be better, and I say my prayers again. Grandma tells me that's the only way to make it right, when a feller has been wicked and sees things at night. And so, when other naughty boys would coax me into sin, 
I try to squash the tempter's voice that urges me within. And when there's pie for supper, or cakes that's big and nice, I want to... But I do not pass my plate for them things twice. No, brother let starvation wipe me slowly out of sight. Then I should keep a living on and see him things at night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Mortifying Mistake by Anna Maria Pratt From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer as Dorothy Lian Yao as the sister Sonia as Elizabeth Wigglesworth And Thomas Peter as the teacher A Mortifying Mistake I studied my tables over and over and backward and forward too but i couldn't remember six times nine and i didn't know what to do till sister told me to play with my doll and not to bother my head if you call her fifty-four for a while you'll learn it by heart she said so i took my favorite marianne though i thought twas a dreadful shame to give such a perfectly lovely child such a perfectly horrid name and i called her my dear little fifty-four a hundred times till i knew the answer of six times nine as well as the answer of two times two next day elizabeth wigglesworth who always acts so proud said six times nine is fifty-two and i nearly laughed aloud but i wished i hadn't when teacher said now dorothy tell if you can for i thought of my doll and six alive i answered mary ann end of poem this recording is in the public domain the smack in school by william pitt palmer from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator jason in panama as the master thomas peter as the little imp and craig franklin as william the smack in school a district school not far away mid berkshire hills one winter's day was humming with its wonted noise of threescore mingled girls and boys some few upon their tasks intent but more on furtive mischief bent the while the master's downward look was fastened on a copy-book when suddenly behind his back rose sharp and clear a rousing smack as twere a battery of bliss let off in one tremendous kiss what's that the startled master cries that fair a little imp replies what william willis if you please i saw him kiss susanna peace with frown to make a statue thrill the master thundered hither will like wretch overtaken in his track with stolen chattels on his back will hung his head in fear and shame and to the awful presence came a great green bashful simpleton the butt of all good-natured fun with smile suppressed and birch upraised the threatener faltered i'm amazed that you my biggest pupil should be guilty of an act so rude before the whole set school to boot what evil genius put you up to it twas she herself sir sobbed the lad i did not mean to be so bad but when susanna shook her curls and whispered i was afraid of girls and durstn't kiss a baby's doll i couldn't stand it sir at all but up and kissed her on the spot i know boo-hoo i ought to not but somehow from her looks boo-hoo i thought she kind of wished me to end of poem this recording is in the public domain There Was a Little Girl by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 
Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. There was a little girl. There was a little girl, and she had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very, very good, and when she was bad, she was horrid. One day she went upstairs when her parents, unawares, in the kitchen were occupied with meals, and she stood upon her head in her little trundle bed and then began hurraying with her heels. Her mother heard the noise and she thought it was the boys a playing at a combat in the attic. But when she climbed the stair and found Jemima there, she took and she did spank her most emphatic. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Story of Cruel Frederick from the English Truvelpeter by Heinrich Hoffmann from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Story of Cruel Frederick. Here is Cruel Frederick, see a horrid wicked boy was he he caught the flies poor little things and then tore off their tiny wings he killed the birds and broke the chairs and threw the kitten down the stairs and oh far worse than all beside he whipped his mary till she cried the trough was full and faithful tray came out to drink one sultry day he wagged his tail and wet his lip when cruel Fred snatched up a whip, and whipped poor Trey till he was sore, and kicked and whipped him more and more. At this, good Trey grew very red, and growled and bit him till he bled. Then you should only have been by to see how Fred did scream and cry. So Frederick had to go to bed, his leg was very sore and red. The doctor came and shook his head and made a very great to-do and gave him nasty physic too but good dog tray is happy now he has no time to say bow wow he seats himself in frederick's chair and laughs to see the nice things there the soup he swallows sup by sup and eats the pies and puddings up end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Dreadful Story About Harriet and the Matches by Heinrich Hoffmann From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the narrator Lian Yao as Harriet And Sonia as the cats The Dreadful Story About Harriet and the Matches From the English Struelpeter it almost makes me cry to tell what foolish harriet befell mamma and nurse went out one day and left her all alone at play now on the table close at hand a box of matches chanced to stand and kind mamma and nurse had told her that if she touched them they should scold her but harriet said oh what a pity for when they burn it is so pretty they crackle so and spit and flame mamma too often does the same the pussy cats heard this and they began to hiss and stretch their claws and raise their paws meow they said meow meow you'll burn to death if you do so but harriet would not take advice she lit a match it was so nice it crackled so it burned so clear exactly like the picture here she jumped for joy and ran about and was too pleased to put it out the pussycat saw this and said oh naughty naughty miss and stretched their claws and raised their paws tis very very wrong you know meow 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 you will be burned if you do so and see oh what a dreadful thing the fire has caught her apron string her apron burns her arms her hair she burns all over everywhere 
Then how the pussy cats did mew! What else, poor pussies, could they do? They screamed for help, twas all in vain. So then they said, We'll scream again. Make haste, make haste, meow, meow. She'll burn to death, we told her so. So she was burnt with all her clothes, and arms, and hands, and eyes, and nose, till she had nothing more to lose except her little scarlet shoes, and nothing else but these was found among her ashes on the ground. And when the good cats sat beside the smoking ashes, how they cried! Meow, mew, meow, mew, what will mamma and nursey do? Their tears ran down their cheeks so fast, they made a little pond at last. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Story of Johnny Head and Air by Heinrich Hoffmann From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter as the narrator Craig Franklin as everyone And Lian Yao as the fishes The Story of Johnny Head and Air From the English Struvelbitter As he trudged along to school it was always Johnny's rule to be looking at the sky and the clouds that floated by. But what just before him lay in his way, Johnny never thought about, so that everyone cried out, Look at little Johnny there! Little Johnny head in air! Running just in Johnny's way came a little dog one day. Johnny's eyes were still astray, up on high, in the sky, and he never heard them cry. Johnny, mind the dog is nigh. Bump, thump. Down they fell with such a thump, dog and Johnny in a lump. Once, with head as high as ever, Johnny walked beside the river. Johnny watched the swallows trying, which was cleverest at flying. Oh, what fun! Johnny watched the bright round sun going in and coming out. This was all he thought about. So he strode on. Only think, to the river's very brink, where the bank was high and steep, and the water very deep, and the fishes in a row stared to see him coming so. One step more, oh, sad to tell, headlong in poor Johnny fell, and the fishes in dismay wagged their tails and ran away. There lay Johnny on his face, with his nice red writing case, but as they were passing by, two strong men had heard him cry, and with sticks these two strong men hooked poor Johnny out again. Oh, you should have seen him shiver when they pulled him from the river. He was in a sorry plight, dripping wet and such a fright, wet all over everywhere, clothes and arms and face and hair. Johnny never will forget what it is to be so wet. And the fishes, one, two, three, are come back again, you see. Up they came the moment after, to enjoy the fun and laughter. Each popped out his little head, and to tease poor Johnny said, Silly little Johnny, look, you have lost your writing book. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Three Children by Anonymous From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Three Children Three children sliding on the ice upon a summer's day As it fell out, they all fell in, the rest they ran away Now had these children been at home, or sliding on dry ground ten thousand pounds to one penny they had not all been drowned you parents all the children have and you too that have none if you would have them safe abroad pray keep them safe at home end of poem this recording is in the public domain the owl and the pussycat 
by Edward Lear, from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian Yao as a narrator, Thomas Peter as the Owl, Anusha Ayer as the Pussycat, and Jason in Panama as the Piggy. The Owl and the Pussycat 1. The Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea-green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money, wrapped up in a five-pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above and sang to a small guitar. Oh, lovely pussy, oh, pussy, my love, what a beautiful pussy you are. You are, you are, what a beautiful pussy you are. 2. Pussy said to the owl, You elegant fowl, how charmingly sweet you sing. Oh, let us be married, too long we have tarried. But what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows, and there in a wood a piggy wig stood with a ring at the end of his nose. His nose, his nose, with a ring at the end of his nose. 3. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring? said the piggy. I will. So they took it away, and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand, on the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon. The moon, the moon, they danced by the light of the moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.